Danske Bank provided a hole in the wall around the Western financial system that allowed vast quantities of, of illicit funds to flow in without anyone knowing who they belonged to. I found that this company, which had been a big active customer in the bank for several months, had filed accounts saying that during that same period, it was dormant, and yet they shoved $200 million in four months through their accounts. It could just have been one company, one bad lot had got in. But once I started digging, it was obvious it was something much more systemic with the customer base. Anyone who provides a, a backdoor through this is able to make a lot of money out of it. And that was the business model of Danske Bank's Estonian branch. I looked at the three largest UK LLPs, the three most profitable ones in Estonia, and I pulled the accounts, and it was quite interesting. They were all fake. Not just that, they all basically looked the same, and it turned out that they all had the same registered office in the UK. Firstly, it looked like this particular group of companies had been into some very bad stuff, but worse than that, it looked like there'd been some collusion as well. I made my whistleblowing report directly to Copenhagen and the reason being was that the issues seemed to be so serious that it wasn't appropriate to raise them within the branch. Not appropriate. The internal auditors confirmed what I found, but then they just did nothing. The fact that the bank then essentially refused to take the action that they should have been taking only added to the seriousness of what he was exposing. There's a lot of people who valued their career more than doing the right thing. You know, I don't want to be involved or anywhere near this, so I resigned. I also warned them that I'd taken legal advice and that if they weren't going to go and inform the authorities, then I was quite prepared to do it myself. When I resigned, the bank had a right to enforce a non-compete clause to stop me going and working for a competitor and paying for it. Guy flew over from Copenhagen, met in a hotel, presented me with this agreement. The problem with this agreement was that there was a, also essentially a very tough gag clause, non-disclosure agreement within this. I wasn't happy with that, basically because of the lack of action from management over the previous months. The non-disclosure agreements, they're used all the time to silence whistleblowers. This senior executive looked me in the eye and he gave me his personal assurance that he had zero tolerance for money laundering and he was going to sort the whole thing out. His personal assurance. So reluctantly I signed. The lead whistleblower is being told he can't identify the people involved, the customers, and he can't identify the corporate officials who are involved. The bank is an economically rational actor. Even if the bank is 90% sure that if it went to court it would lose, it would still be rational for the bank to sue me because it would set an example to other potential whistleblowers. We can't demonize regimes and have our own little side industry of people who are making money off their money. It doesn't wash. He is a man of principles, you know? and I think that that drove his decision making throughout the entire process, even though you could tell that uh, some of the decisions were extremely difficult for him to bear. Some Estonian newspaper decided that one of the great questions that needed to be answered about the Danske Bank story was who was the name of the whistleblower and that was me. The criminal gets protection of the identity. The whistleblower's identity is leaked and there's nothing he can do about it. We weren't really pleased to have my name come out. It's not great from a, from a safety point of view. Whoever outed him, uh, you know, wanted to make sure that he felt intimidated. The people he exposed have very long memories. I have no doubt that certainly they will think he still knows secrets that could be harmful to them. And the fact that he did what he did is something that they have a track record of not forgiving. He was told right from the beginning 
that the Russian secret police were one of the people controlling an account. And one of Putin's relatives had an account. And so, yeah, he, he, will, he will always be in danger. It's, it's, uh, he has given himself a life sentence. Even though we can't be sure about the dimensions of this problem and we can't be sure how much money we're talking about, we are more sure or less unsure than we were because of Howard Wilkinson's exposure of, of Danske Bank's crimes. When you get a whistleblower like Wilkinson, who exposes something so big, there will be accountability. There will be reforms. I think what he did was, was I mean, principled and correct, but also incredibly brave. Um, and, and it deserves you know, greater recognition than, than, it, than it's received. One, one hopes never to run into anything like this. But once you've run into it, you hope that when you report it really to a proper level, that people will do something appropriate about it. Uh, you know, it's six years on now.